Uh, my name is Dennis Pennington, Wheat Extension Specialist with Michigan State University. Uh, this stop here is going to talk about uh, wheat planting technologies. Uh, working on this project with Dr. Manny Singh and Calvin Canfield in the back here uh, is a grad student uh, working on this project as well. And I got a, a good chunk of my crew in the back here too that helps do all the plot work and all the hard labor weeding and everything else that they do. So um, I appreciate all their hard work. But uh, anyway, so uh, this stop we're going to talk about some of the different planter technologies. In your packet or in your uh, little bags or whatever, there, we have a, a flyer in there that, that's going to talk about the three different uh, planters uh, and the different technology that we have. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about the past, kind of the present, and then the future, kind of where we're going to be going here uh, with this planting technology. So let's start over here on the left here. This is just a conventional uh, John Deere no-till drill, or it's, I'm sorry, it's a conventional drill. Um, it's not set up for no-till, uh, but this one uses the metering wheels on the bottom to meter seed out. Uh, there's a slide adjustment to control so you can adjust your rate so when you're if you're trying to hit a target rate um, you you set it where you think it should be uh, spin the wheels uh, collect your seed weigh it and if you've got what you're supposed to you're right on the money if not you got to adjust it so the way you adjust this one is just there's a, a setter on the back side there um, to set for your your seating rate the benefits of this kind of a machine is that the technology's been around a long time. Uh, parts are readily accessible. The cost of this kind of machine is relatively low compared to some of the other alternatives that, that we have out there. Um, and everybody's familiar with these. If you don't have one of these on your farm, your dad or grandpa uh, more than likely had one. It might not have been green, but uh, you had a drill on on the farm. And the in our, our research we're using this as kind of our control so any new technology that we're looking at needs to be better than this one um, in terms of producing more yield um, the one of the disadvantages of this is um, there's a metering wheel that meters the seed out the back that I mentioned and then that just drops down the drop tube there is however those seeds fall and land in the furrow is how they get planted there's no attempt to try to space the seed or prevent like three of them from dropping and landing in the furrow together um, it's just however they fall down that drop tube and where they land that's where they get planted um, the other thing on the uh, this type of a planter is depth control uh, we're finding we're getting a lot better depth control with this type of planter where it's got these depth control gauge wheels uh, that are right at where the disc openers are. This one, the depth gauge wheels are probably, what, maybe 16, 18 inches behind it. So as you go over uneven ground, if you don't have a good smooth level seed bed, uh, you're gonna get variable seeding depth uh, with this type of drill where this one will ride over those humps and whatnot as well, but you're controlling your depth uh, as you ride over them humps right where you're dropping your seed. So, um, one of the disadvantages of this is you, you don't get nearly as good of depth control and I really thought that these were not so bad until we started digging plants. You, you start digging up three foot of row in a plant and measure how deep the seed is and, and how deep they're planted. It is highly variable. I couldn't believe how variable it was. That was probably one of the biggest surprises to me in this whole trial was what we found out with this. Um, so this is kind of our control. This is kind of where we're starting with. Now we're saying, all right, what can we do to improve planting technology and doing a better job of placing seed in the furrow uh, so that we can get seed germinated and up uniformly uh, and get a uniform stand of wheat. So the next thing, uh, the, uh, the middle one on, on your hand out there is a vacuum planter. Uh, this one is a Monosome row unit. Uh, you may be familiar with these. John Deere actually acquired Monosome here a couple years ago. Uh, so this company is now owned by John Deere and I think the reason that they acquired them is because of, of this vacuum planting technology that they have. It's, it's, it's very good and it's used can be used on a wide range of crop species. You can plant vegetables, you can plant field crops, you can plant canola, um, uh, you know, corn, soybeans, wheat, uh, anything with this, this type of a system. So you got the red unit up top that spins and creates vacuum. The vacuum then uh, is channeled down these tubes to each row unit and uh, what it does basically is on the back side within the row unit uh, there's vacuum that then allows this thing to spin this is your seed disc uh, and pick up seeds so this 
it spins around, picks up seed, and then it gets to a spot where the vacuum is shut off, and it just drops the seed down the drop tube uh, down the ground. So um, there's the benefit of this is we can control how fast this thing spins. Okay, so depending on our seeding rate, that thing's gonna if you're gonna have plant a higher population or a lower population, that thing's gonna go faster or slower. Um, and now one thing, this was a ground driven unit when we bought it. Um, we changed it over. This is a hydraulic motor here, so we can actually control that from the cab. Um, and we can we can set our seeding rate right in the cab. Uh, and we actually that's how we plan our plots because we're doing seeding rate studies with this thing. Um, so we, we write a prescription and SMS, export it to the display, um, connect it to the planter, and we just drive. And then it automatically changes populations as we go. And when it changes populations, the only thing it's doing is changing how fast that thing spins. That's the only thing it's doing to change uh, population. So, to get accurate singulation, notice I've got two different... Um, can I talk without that? Yeah. All right. Um, I've got two different seed discs here. What's the difference between them? <clears throat> yeah, this one's got two rows of holes. This one's got one. This one, each row of holes has 120 holes for one revolution. So if I have two of them, how many seeds am I going to drop in one revolution? 240 right this one has 120 this spins one time I'm dropping 120 this one has to spin twice as fast to plant the same number of seeds as this one so if I'm trying to plant wheat where we're planting a higher population which one might be better this one here maybe right but the problem that we found with this one are you familiar with this thing this is a singulation arm what this does is this mounts inside the row unit and essentially what you do is you can adjust that thing up and down so that as this thing spins, you're only getting one seed attached to each hole. Okay, you only, if you, and I, I will tell you, particularly with that one, sometimes we'll get three seeds attached to each hole. You need to knock the, the extra seeds off so that when that thing spins around, it's ready to drop, you're only dropping one seed at a time. That's the goal, that's what singulation is. Um, so what we found, we started with these actually, um, but, if we're going to try to use my singulation unit, what problem am I going to have? Yeah, I'm only singulating on the top row of holes. What about my inside row of holes? I can't singulate that, can I? Okay, so I think what, and we're, we planted spring wheat behind you here uh, with this one. We planted our winter wheat uh, with this one last fall. Um, and we're going to see just how good a singulation we can get between these two different um, systems. But, uh, you know, the goal is to get one seed dropped at a time and not see three seeds in the hole. But I could tell you, even with, with this vacuum planter, we're still getting um, places where you're dropping three seeds to a hole, and then you'll have a gap, um, and then it'll singulate, and then sometimes you'll get two seeds drop and a gap, um, and so on. So uh, this is not 100% yet. Uh, we're a long ways from it. Uh, we're, we can do a better job with corn and soybeans, but how far apart are we planting corn and soybeans in a row? Quite a bit further apart. Wheat seed, we're trying to plant, what, quarter inch apart, half inch apart, three-eighths of an inch? So um, imagine trying to do that consistently and be able to drive your planter at seven, eight mile an hour, okay? It's that we're trying to push the technology we have farther than what it was intended for. So that brings me to the last piece of equipment, uh, which is the Horsch. Uh, this is a German-made planter. Uh, this is a prototype. It's not sold in the U.S. Uh, this is set up like an air seeder, uh, or air planter, sorry. Um, many of your, your John Deere and your Case IH, Kinsey planters, they'll have a seed bin up at the top in the front, which this one has a seed bin, and a um, fertilizer bin in the back. Um, so <coughs> you can meter out seed and fertilizer at the same time. But it meter, it, the seed is metered out at the bottom. It uses forced air, not vacuum. It uses forced air to blow the seed through this big tube right under here. And it blows it up into this thing, which is a distribution system. And then that distribution system sends seed to each of the row units. Now, uh, depending on the type of equipment you have, some of them will then attempt to singulate on each row unit. Some of them will not. Um, this is the only one that I've found that will singulate with wheat, okay? <coughs> there's units that will singulate for corn and soybeans, uh, but there's not readily available equipment that'll singulate wheat seed. 
so the way this system works, this is the singulator. So seed is fed into it. This actually mounts on the thing like this. So the seed comes in here. <clears throat> and then you've got this disc that spins inside. And so remember, you got air blowing right through here. This thing spins. How does it singulate? It uses centrifugal force. This thing spins, so if seed falls down in here, as that thing spins, it's going to force the seed down here. If there's already a seed in here, the seed bypasses, and then it has to circulate back around until it can find an empty pocket. So this thing spins actually, this will spin up to 3,100 RPMs. That's how fast this thing will go. Um, it's electric drive. Uh, there's a spot where the electric plugs in. Um, so the, the power cable to that is like that big around. It's huge. There, this planter takes a lot of power. Um, but that's how this thing works. So you've got a gear system that meters out seed. You've got a vacuum system that, uh, that holds seed to a seed plate. Then you've got a system that uses forced air and centrifugal force to singulate seed. That's the key differences between these types of planters. And so what we're trying to do is figure out, does placing seed in the furrow at exact spacings improve yield? For corn, they, they found they figure 7 to 8% yield bump by singulating compared to not singulating seed. Same planter, same everything, 7 to 8%. That's what, what's published in the literature for that. If we can get 7 to 8% yield bump by singulating seed, I'd say let's try it. Um, the problem or the challenge is that we're trying to plant uh, wheat seed at what, seven times the population? Uh, of, or, or maybe even more than that, more like 20 times the population of corn. Um, so that, that's the real challenge. So we've got some wheat planted in behind here. Uh, this is spring wheat, by the way. We didn't get the, this planter until like September. And we were busy getting our other stuff in, so we didn't plant any. We plant a little bit of winter wheat with this, but not very much. Um, so the trials out here are uh, spring wheat. And we have uh, each of these pieces of equipment uh, in strips, so you can see what the different strips are. Uh, we have two different populations, and then with this one, we have it with it singulated and not singulated. So basically, we just take the row unit, or take the singulator off. You can pop that off, and then uh, this thing here, it's, it's like just a cover, and all it does is it pushes the seed down the drop tube. So you slide that on and you can, the metering then is only done up front and it doesn't singulate at the row unit. The biggest challenge with these things is you have to size the seed. So if you imagine, if you try, if you get one seed in here and another one partly stuck in here and that thing spins around, what's gonna happen when it gets to where it drops? It shears off the seed. So then you get a bunch of seed debris inside your chamber in here where that thing is spinning and eventually the stuff is going to build up in there and it'll it'll a buzzer will come on in the cab tell you got a plug uh, singulator. So every every one of these has drawbacks. Every one of these planters. The biggest drawback for that one is you have to actually size the seed. And we did that with wheat seed. We had it sized perfectly Michigan Crop Improvement did it for us um, and then we treated the seed and then everything changed it wasn't all the same size seed again so uh, so I don't know what I don't know how we're gonna address that issue but we did the same thing with soybeans so this is set up for soybeans uh, the pockets are a little bit bigger size to, to hold a soybean seed um, but we're, we're gonna play around with it and see what we can do um, what haven't I talked about what is the allowance of seed variation? Because on wheat, it's so small figured, you, you could easily have 100 to 200 seed difference. Right. Um, in, in the same lot, I mean, and yeah. after grandies they, and everything else. I, I got to remember, I think they want seed that is um, falls from between a 7 64th and a 5 64th. So the seed that stays in there is what they want to plant. They'll, they'll take the big stuff. And then you could put a bigger pocket in there. You can put a different one of these on um, for a bigger seed. Um, but you have to put, you want to get in groups of big seed, middle seed, and then small seed. And so that's uh, just a whole nother, you know, you, you buy a bag of seed and you don't want to have to try to sort it by size either. So you almost have to do that at the manufacturer, the processing, when they're bagging seed, you got to size the seed there. Yeah, we're required to by law. You got to label that within, you know, 
So, so that's a challenge. The, the other thing that uh, we, we talked about, what is, where are we going to go with this planter down the, down the road there? And Michael Horsch uh, was here in January, and we had a chance to visit a little bit. Uh, and I told him that guys come to me saying that I still want to plant wheat. My drill is wore out, but I need to replace my soybean planter also. If we could build a system that would plant soybeans and wheat, that would be where we would, we could maybe get some market share. So he went back and they he had his engineers draw up some parts, and so we've modified this planter to plant soybeans. So the idea is down the road, if we can have a planter that will plant wheat and soybeans and singulate and do it accurately, then they might bring something like this to the U.S. to sell to sell. They are selling uh, corn and soybean planters in the U.S., but they're not selling any of these as as of yet. Um, so this is totally a prototype. There's there's you can't find another one like it. So trying to figure out how to run it is a challenge because the guys that in North Dakota don't know how to run it either. But um, the guys in Germany are really good about getting back to me um, despite the time difference. But, uh, so yeah, that's I think an add on. So remember when we were talking about in the morning, Calvin was talking about again benefits of singulation, right? So basically we can hopefully go to lower <coughs> seeding rate, cutting our input cost, right? Getting maybe more uniform canopy so we can do a better job with fungicide application. So cutting on input cost, maybe improving on yield and then getting a better quality, right? So those are all the benefits. But then the downside is the investment part, right? That you got to invest on getting a new unit. So as Dennis was talking about, both of these systems we are looking at, they have their pros and cons. But one of the benefits we are trying to, to achieve is can we use this system for a second crop? So we got some soybean uh, planted with this unit uh, in 12 inch row spacing, right Dennis? Yes. We are pretty much plugging every other uh, unit here. So instead of 6 inch spacing, you are getting 12 inch spacing. And then we are comparing that to our 15 inch narrow row planter that we have planted in there to see basically what kind of yield potential we are going to get out of a 12 inch row spacing soybeans, right? Are we going to see some disease issues with that narrow rows? So that's one, one basically approach we are looking. Another approach we are looking into basically if, if a grower is interested in doing these double cropping systems where basically you are getting two crops from the same field in same year, right? Basically going with soybeans after wheat can a same system be used for a system, uh, a production system like that? And we got some plots back in here. If you got a time, please walk those plots where we are essentially looking into not only planting soybeans after wheat is harvested, but even going into standing wheat and doing a, what we call a relay intercropping of soybeans into standing wheat. So we are looking at even basically what ideal wheat varieties do we need? Uh, the ones that have narrow leaf angle hopefully can allow more light to get to the bottom of the canopy allowing, the, allowing those soybeans to grow in there. So again those are some of the ideas we are looking into to minimize that input initial investment cost right. So that's where again basically if singulation does work then having this planter used for a second or even a third crop might help us with that initial investment. I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Do we have time to walk the plots? Uh, we got... Any any questions before we, we, we try to minutes. walk some plots? Two minutes. Yep. You guys want to walk some plots? It's right, right behind you. I, I would say if you don't want to walk the plots, come back if you have yes. a chance. Mm -hmm. um, and look for... There's uh, the three different planting systems uh, out there at two populations. Mm -hmm. Find the pairs that match up. Um, and the one I want you to pay attention to in particular is the singulated versus not singulated because we took the, we planted with the singulators on on this and then we took the singulators off and planted. And what you're going to see is those that where the singulators were off look like it's a, a, a thicker stand. But if you look a little more closely, you're going to find um, clumps of seed and that compared to where it was singulated, they're spaced further apart and you're going to find a few more tillers per plant. So we don't have any data basically what benefit singulation is providing but 
again hopefully this time next year we should have this yield data and this year we're again doing this on spring wheat next year we'll do this on winter wheat as well and and see what kind of yield differences we are able to pick and come down to Mason this afternoon. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at your agenda yet, but uh, we are headed to Mason after lunch, uh, and we'll have more trials down there uh, that we planted with this planter. We got different the different row spacings and populations uh, that Calvin's doing for his uh, master's thesis. So yeah, please please come down and see those plots. We also got the state yield trials down there. You can walk through and look at 108 different varieties of wheat. We've got some spring wheat down there. Uh, we've got barley, oats. Well, the oats don't look real good, but uh, um, that was my boo-boo. That, that got sprayed with uh, Osprey, and oats don't tolerate Osprey very well, so. The thing again, if you get a chance to walk these plots, the simplest comparison you can make is if you see a, a sign that says uh, a seed drill, compare that to basically, we're calling this unit a uh, air planter, air planter. Right? and then singulated. Compare those two, I think we got a perfect comparison right at the beginning of the plots. And you can see where we use the, the seed drill, you can see clumps and then uh, empty space. So you, you do see that, that it wasn't singulating at all, right? And then probably even some differences in seeding depth as well. But when you see it, uh, when you look at the singulated, you don't see that, you see more uniform canopy. So hopefully it's already basically intercepting more sunlight and then basically helping that convert more into photosynthesis and hopefully more yield at the end of the year. Your drill is your tech. Yes. yes. How yeah. old is the technology on this particular drill? And have they, I mean, these are the newest of the newest. Uh -huh. Are we comparing the newest of the newest drills? Okay, so this drill is not the one we used out here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the one we used out here is actually our Elmaco plot drill that has John Deere row units on it. Oh. Um, and that planter is, uh, I don't know how old that is. It's got to be 10 or 12 years old. But it's newer technology. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think so, but I don't know. We're, we're pricing another new one. And the, maybe we don't have the new technology because the price is almost double for a new one but um, compared to what we paid for the other one. So I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what, what is, they got high priced steel, I guess. Any other questions? All right, I think you got one more stop, right?